These are my apple trees that I planted early this spring and I have a little caterpillar problem. If you look right here at this leaf, you'll see there's a little kind of caterpillar nest and in each one of those there's a caterpillar and they've been munching on the leaves. So I'm spraying my trees with something called BT and it's actually a bacteria that when the caterpillars eat it, they immediately stop eating and then they die a few days later. Here's more caterpillar damage. They've been munching on these leaves. With the size my trees are now, I could actually go through and probably squish most of the caterpillars. And I've been doing that, but it's just gotten a little ahead of me. So I'm spraying them to try to get all the caterpillars on all the trees. I've also included in this mix um, a little bit of fish emulsion um, for a foliar feeding. And plants can actually absorb nutrients through their leaves. You don't want to feed young apple trees too much late in the summer because you don't want a rush of growth before the winter. But this is just a tiny bit just to help them along and help them kind of get their vigor back. You just want to coat all of the leaves so any caterpillar that eats any leaf is going to get infected with this bacteria and die. The BT I'm using and this great little sprayer actually came in something called the Homestead Box. And we did a little video posted yesterday on the Homestead Box that the Homestead Box company sent us in the mail. So check out that video. But we are definitely gonna use the stuff in the box. While I've got the sprayer out, I'm also gonna spray my tomatoes. This year I'm spraying them with Serenade. And this is an organic product. It's a bacteria-based product and it helps control fungal disease. The tomato plants look great. They don't have a hint of blight, but you just don't have blight yet this time of year. It comes on later in the summer when the plants are starting to fruit and it can just devastate your plants. We have some fruit, green fruit on some of these. So why are we going to all the trouble to spray our tomatoes? Let me tell you, some years we've had such a problem with blight that the plants all die before we even get significant fruit that's ripened and ready to eat. We live in a very rainy area. And so our very best years for tomatoes are our very driest, even though the rest of the garden doesn't necessarily like the dry years. Some other things we do to prevent blight are we don't spray the plants with water. When we water, we water at the ground if we have to water. We actually try to avoid watering our tomatoes and also we keep the plants tied up and keep them off the ground and also we trim the lower branches so there's no branches touching the ground. Right across the, this driveway from our house, there's this section of bushes here right next to the creek. And I've been meaning to clear this out for a while so that the kids have a place to play down here by the creek where they don't have to worry about snakes as much. It's just all grown up. So I'm gonna work on clearing these bushes out and hauling them out to the woods.
Miss Dolly is acting frisky today. I kind of wonder if she's about to have her calf. See what I'm talking about? This is how I think a cow in heat would act. Hmm. In case Dolly's friskiness is a sign that she's going to go into labor soon, I'm going to let her into the barn. We kept her out of the barn for the past few weeks because she doesn't really need the shelter and she just makes a mess with all her poop. And she's going to be glad to be in there. She likes it in there. It's cool. We're watching her every day for signs of labor and her, her udder is not very full so it's probably not happening in the next day or two. But who knows what's going on. Something's changed in how she's feeling. So we're just going to be watching her real closely. I'm going to put down a couple of bales of hay in the corner where she likes to lay down. That hay is really old. It's not moldy or anything, it's just old and dry. But the goats are nibbling on it. But I promise she'll be laying down there tonight. That's where she would lay down when we let her in the barn before. Who knows whether she'll have her calf in the barn or in the pasture. Either way, it's fine, but now she's got a nice spot in there. All right, this area looks way better. I've almost got it all cleared out. There's a little more brush here, but now the kids can go down to the creek and play. We can see them from the house, and there'll just be less risk of running into snakes down here. So this was a working video. This is the kind of video I make when I'm actually getting stuff done. Thank you so much for watching our videos. If you're one of those people who just loves our channel and is actually looking for a way to support us, go to Patreon and just check it out. Patreon's a place where you can donate a really small amount of money um, once a month. There's a bunch of people over there. Um, right now and we actually have one video up over there. That's a cool video about creativity in the history of our homestead Anyway, that was a great day in the homestead and we'll see you tomorrow